What do you think of that? An uppity one. State your business, Redskin. Let me pass, sir. Proper gentleman, eh? Where'd you steal the wagon? Get off. It's mine. I said get off, Walt. This isn't necessary. It's mine now. Horton, stand away from that man. What's this about? We were just having a discussion, Corporal. Well, that's not what it looked like to me. That's all it was. I could jail you, Horton. Uh, we'll let the matter lie. I have no desire to pursue it. All right, go about your business. You press charges, Mr. Jay. John Jay. No, white men hate Indians. I doubt that two days in jail would change that. Are you Corporal Clive Bennett? I am. You're the man I came to see. I have something here that I want you to look at. Read these documents, Corporal. Border Town is about to be returned to its rightful owners, the Cree Nation. I don't know what you're talking about. This land belongs to the Dominion of Canada. In 1874, negotiations were concluded between Her Majesty's government and several tribes over this territory here. An agreement that neither party had the right to make. I'm gonna need more time to study this. Certainly. I've waited years for this. I can wait a few days more. Uh, Corporal, could you, uh, of course. Let this man pass. I heard what that Indian said in there, Corporal. My land belongs to me. What are you going to do about it? I don't know yet. I haven't had a chance to read the charges. Read? Don't waste the time. Just run them out of town. Clear out of here, Booth. And the rest of you go, too. Let's get out of here. Oh, excuse me. A glass of red wine, if you have it. I'm sorry. Then a whiskey. Hey, Zach. A couple whiskeys over here. It's a funny place you have here. A uh, saloon without whiskey. Oh, we got plenty of whiskey. We just got none for you. We don't serve Indians. 
I see no sign posted to indicate that. There's no need. It's a town ordinance. Everybody knows about it. Sir, I don't. I see no notice of such an ordinance in here. I will run this saloon the way I please. Now, you can array it all you like, but I'm not going to serve you alcohol. And get me a coffee, sir. Afternoon, Redskin. Let's have a look at that wampum bag there, hmm? Your friend has done a good job. These appear to be in order. Are his charges valid? I would say so. The Wood Creek Band was not represented at any treaty meeting. Yet the Canadian government now owns their land. In your experience, what do you think his chances of victory are? I hope your government is holding high cards. The fact that his tribe was not party to the initial agreement renders this contract null and void. Whatever happens, it will be settled honorably. You think that likely, Corporal? I've seen people fight to the death for their homes. I doubt your citizens will react differently. happens again, the man responsible will end up in irons. Yeah, he's only on drunk. Now. Do you hear me? Let's go! Come on. Get him out of here. Move along. Move. I'm sorry. Well, bro, these people are going to lose what they believe to be theirs. I can understand that. Listen, we're going to sort this thing out. I've sent for my superior officer, Commissioner Stewart, and he should be here soon. Now, I need to speak with you. Let me clean myself up first. We will meet in there in an hour. You want to tell me what's going on here? This is your government's fault, Corporal. You thought us too stupid to realize that we were being cheated. But the time of the Cree giving in is over. The old men that you could fool, but not me. The world changes, John. Why not learn to live together? How long does it usually take you to get a meal in here? You could sit here with me all day and not be fed. Live with you. That will change. Perhaps. If we give away our lands and our culture, you may allow us to buy a drink in a white man's saloon. I don't consider that a fair exchange, Clive, do you? It's not for me to decide. I know. But do you think it's fair? We've been waiting for some food over here, Zach. <laughs> Mr. J. 
Corporal Bennett has apprised me of your complaint. And I am here to offer redress. I have in my possession full compensation for the land your band once held. This is a promissory note for $25,000. Sign, and it's yours. Sir, you were in no position to claim ownership. We did not negotiate that land away in the first place. That matter is not up for discussion. It most certainly is. John, we are offering you what is owed. No, you're not, Corporal. What is owed to me and my people is the land between the American border and Drumheller. Not this. Stubborn fellow. Commissioner, his claim seems legitimate. Dr. Bennett, let me tell you something. That land is the property of the government of Canada. It is our duty to see that it remains that. No matter. It took me four years to fall enough trees. Three years to pull out enough rocks to plant. Meg looks twice her age. I'd feel twice mine. Yeah, you're right, Frank. That's white folks done all the work, not them savages. I signed bad deals before, but I'm man enough to stand by them. Fight the ranches for water. Fight the weather every year. But still, it's mine. It's gonna stay that way. You look right pretty, Redskin. Leave. You have no right in here. And you have no right wearing those clothes. Get them off you. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to teach you a lesson. I can't believe what I'm hearing. Believe it, Corporal. Because it is now a fact. In black and white. The representative of the Wood Creek Band was a Jacob Firehawk. His mark here indicates that the Wood Creek Band agreed with the principles laid out in the Treaty of 1874. These are lies. You know it, and I know it. Listen to me, Corporal Bennett. The Dominion cannot afford to lose that land. If this country is chopped in half, there is no guarantee that the whole of the Western territories won't come under the American flag. And what about one law for all men? I've heard you preach that in the past, Commissioner. Or is that something we only believe when it suits our needs? Don't lecture me, boy. Corporal Bennett. This is a necessary compromise. It stinks. Oh, yes. Like a corpse. But we are building a rail line that will span this country. A rail line that will tie the Dominion together. And it just happens to run straight through land that rightfully belongs to the Wood Creek Indians. No, it runs through Canadian land. Remember that, Corporal. Canadian. I take it as my responsibility to inform Mr. Jay of the facts. No. This is my jurisdiction. I will do it. Then give him the facts. And not your opinions, Corporal. Your obligation and your duty is to your country, not to your conscience. to tell the savages sometimes, isn't it, Corporal? What happened? He tried to kill me. 
He drew on me. I answered. You believe him? Yes, I do. Traitor. Let's go. Marie, you want to take a look at this man? You will be in the cell. Why don't you go live with him, Bennett? Go marry yourself a squaw. Shut Now you're going to listen to me? Booth is one man. Yeah, well, there'll be others. You get that Indian John Jay out of town, or I will. Don't worry, Craddock. He will be leaving. How is he? He'll be fine. This will have to stop soon, Clive. I know. But what I have to do makes me sick. You don't have a choice. I could resign. Oh. What would that accomplish? I wouldn't have to swallow this. And what would happen to all the people who look to Clive Bennett for protection? I was brought up to believe in the government. That if I did its work, my hands would stay clean. Well, they're filthy. They are sacrificing a little to save a lot. I know from medicine that sometimes that is necessary. What kind of country is built on lies and dishonesty? Commissioner, I wanted to talk to you alone. John, what you want isn't going to happen. No, you wish it not to happen. But that is the beauty of the law. We judge cases on their merits, not on the merits of the combatants. And uh, the law is on my side. I've been waiting for this fight all my life. I'm prepared for it. Take the money. What? 25,000 Canadian dollars for land half the size of Alberta. My band signed no deal. The land will be returned. What will you get if you get the land back? The railway company will pay us $5,000 a year to cross it. Protecting your culture, are you? Learning your rules. John, as your friend, I have to tell you to take the money now. You don't like being beaten. No. I'm telling you, you don't even know the game. Well, I have everything I need here to fight it. Affidavits that support the fact the Wood Creek Band were not represented in the treaty. Declarations that the Indian leaders believed this to be a peace treaty, not a land transfer. Do you have anything from a Jacob Firehawk? Who? Firehawk, the emissary for the Wood Creek Band. Your band. <laughs> there is no such man. Yes, there is. And he's listed in the official government records. He agreed on your band's behalf to the principles of the 1874 treaty. You're welcome to view the documents. You work for the CPR, Monty. The railwaymen pay your salary. You can challenge the treaty in court. I don't give you much hope of success. I will fight this. Especially since you shot a white man here. I thought you to be a man of honor. So the superior Canadians cheated, huh? I doubt your country's record is much prouder, Marshal. I didn't say it was correct, just necessary. John. This is the way you see us. No, I don't. The elders were right. This is the only way to fight you. We will meet again.
You did a fine job, Corporal. Doesn't feel like it. When you see the railway come across this country, you'll feel differently. Is it over, Mr. Stewart? There'll be no more problems, I assure you. Our farms are safe? From everything, but drought. You have a fine corporal here. Remember that. Corporal. Later, Bruce. You've got to understand, I worked my guts out to clear that land. He was after everything I owned. Everything all of us own. This used to belong to his people. Your farm, this office, all of it. Corporal. There uh, could be a slight increase in the Indian problem over the next few months. It may be a good idea to check on these farms on a regular basis, eh? <laughs> There's a good chap. Excuse me. A glass of red wine, if you please. <laughs> <laughs> Clive, <clears throat> I was wondering if you would like to have dinner. No. No, thank you, Maureen. You can't stay in here forever. I almost wish I could. You did the only thing you could do. Oh, no, I know. For the greater good, for the country. Then accept it and go on. Clive, you won't change the world. Maintain the right. What did you say? To maintain the right. It's the Mountie motto. It's funny how you can do your job without being true to it. You kept the peace. That's part of your job, too. <laughs> Commissioner Stewart's recommending me for a commendation. He says I displayed conduct becoming an officer. What's that supposed to mean, Marie?